Okay, I got it. This is this is insane. So I got this idea to All right, so here's what happened. I was driving through south of Boston. I was driving out of Boston, coming out out of a tunnel, and I was bearing right around a curve, a blind curve. It was a two-lane highway uh overpass kind of thing, and there was th this dude uh, all right, so there was a couple who was pulled over in a black car with his emergency blink, uh, emergency lights on, and he is dressed in all black, standing, there was only a half a shoulder for this car to pull over onto, right? And so, and we're, everybody's coming around a blind curve, and it's Boston, everyone's flying, like at least 20 over the speed limit. And this guy's in the middle of, not in the middle, but just to the, he's in the traffic lane, like waving people over. He's wearing all black. He's using just his hand. And it was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen somebody do. And like, I've seen a lot of dumb stuff. Um, I've done a lot of dumb stuff. I've done a lot worse than that actually. But, um, and he, he was, I guess he was trying to protect his girlfriend who was like picking up something that must have fallen out of the car. It was something big, like a chair or something. And I was like, just, I was, you know, you see stuff driving and it's, you're just like, what the hell? Um, so, but I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, I wish I could like chuck a flare, throw a flare at him and like, just so he'd have something so he wouldn't die. And then I got thinking as I continued on my drive that, it would be so cool to have like a, like a roadside or a, like a road flare sh sh launcher. <laughs> I was like thinking like, dude, I could like <laughs> have my truck shoot out flare. I don't know. Anyway. And then I, I kept going with it and I was like, what if I could control it with Alexa? And, and then anyway, long story short, I, within an hour, I had myself convinced that I was going to do it. And so far, I've spent about a week thread it like this, um, and then like this. trying to design this. And I spent about four test runs, um, which were all fails. I tried five different configurations, and then I tried three different ignition systems. Um, hopefully, I can play some sort of montage for you. But, yeah, it's been... I mean, a week isn't that long, but it's been very frustrating. But I think I've got it now. <laughs> I think that this is it. So I'm going to show you how this works. First, it's going to be kind of a disoriented um, tour, but I don't know where to even start. We'll start with this. We'll start with the propellant inside of this launcher, right? So that is a Ramset 22 caliber powder charge so you know these are the ones they use for masonry to um to basically blast a uh, masonry fastener or a really hard nail um you there's a whole bunch of different models of ram set guns but what it is is it's just a 22 cal that's loaded with varying amounts of powder um and strength and what it does is it just opens up along this kind of uh, creased um, tip and the casing just opens. It doesn't fire any projectile, but it's just a blast. And normally it will combust or de deflagrate um, inside of a combustion chamber. Be you know, it, it ho holds it, it, it contains it so that the, the powder inside can fully combust, which is what gives you the power of yeah, anyway, the forward propulsion, and that would normally strike a nail. So what I happened to have was a 22 caliber perimeter alarm, which is this thing. Um, I got it on Amazon. It was kind of a ripoff for 35 bucks. I went ahead and ordered four more of them from Timu or whatever, um, and they were all pretty much the wrong ones. So I... I uh, they, uh, they, I'll look for a link and put it in the description. I do not have any affiliate links. I don't make any money from these videos. Just let it be known. 
any referrals I'm giving to you are do not benefit me in any way at this point. Maybe someday they will, but right now they don't. So anyway, this is that perimeter alarm. And so I'm going to, am I going to load it right now? Is this connected? Yeah, I will. Well, first I'll show you the actual, nope, I'm just going to show you how it goes. So we load up this little charge and then how am I going to secure this? Yeah, there we go. You screw this on. This is um, water resistant. I wouldn't say waterproof, but this is a, supposed to be waterproof, but it's like one of those low quality junky things on Amazon that, you know, are just like all made in China and they're not, you know, whatever. <laughs> You, you get what you pay for. I mean, it was 29 bucks, but so, okay. So this is a loaded perimeter alarm with a 22 caliber powder charge. This is a water valve actuator. Um, it's basically a Wi-Fi water valve controller. And I mean, I, this was my, the, the last, my last attempt at trying to solve this conundrum. But the way it works is this lever arm here just rotates 90 degrees and then 90 degrees. And what it's meant to do is to just, this hose clamp clamps onto a, a pipe like this. And then this, this actuator arm has these two little prongs, which I've lost already. Yeah, well, this is one of them. So it has these two little prongs that normally, you know, sit here and they go around the, the handle here and they just rotate it. So I just modified this because it was like a very simple kind of servo. I had been trying to avoid using a servo because I wanted to keep it a simple machine um, that ran off of a spring. Uh, but um, the only way I could, well, come up with to control this spring via Alexa was <laughs> to basically... Well, yeah. um, so anyway, I was like, okay, whatever. I, I just kind of caved and, and tried this. But so the way it works is it rotates leftward, rightward, pulls this pin. This pin, um, once it's removed, releases a spring or releases the whatever, it releases the pin, the, the striker pin. And then spring loaded, so it shoots down and strikes the rim fire 22 caliber um, powder charge. Now that 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 um, pressure goes around an elbow. The reason I'm using an elbow is because of weatherproofing, right? So the way it's going to be mounted under the vehicle is with the 90 degree curve. It allows me to face this this shut off valve um, in the direction of travel forward so that all the road grime and water that comes up from the tires um, at least is, you know, hitting this head on, you know, and because it's going to be sheltered from precipitation from above, you know, by the vehicle itself. But the forward, you know, flying down a highway, theoretically, I'm not, I don't think I'm actually going to, no, no, I'm gonna. I'm not attaching this to my vehicle. It'll go haywire, and I will end up arrested. And so I'm not really doing that. And I don't recommend anyone else does. It was just a proof of concept to basically see if I could make you know accomplish that objective given the materials available in a simple kind of hack way. Not like no, I'm not 3D printing or CNCing anything. These are all just you know random things from Home Depot. Um. And so anyway, this burst, this charge goes down around this elbow and it propels a flare, right? That's loaded here. I don't have a long barrel because I don't want this flare. I, anytime you have combustion occurring in a projectile going down a barrel, you're talking the longer the barrel, the longer the exit velocity. Obviously, that diminishes as the length, the lumen of the barrel reaches the volume of the gases released from deflagration of the propellant. Okay, but whatever. 
I'm just saying a short barrel will give it a quick little pop. It'll maybe launch it 10 or 15 feet. The reason I know this is because I've already done it. Um, so this one will, will, this is a level two charge and it'll just make it kind of go like, like barely come out of the, of the mounting. And then um, this one, the, the, the yellow, the level four will, would, would essentially launch it from here. There'd be pretty decent kickback because of the mass of the flare and it would probably dent my door right there. And then the green is like just right. It'll launch it approximately um, and it would essentially fly out as I'm going forward and just kind of plop down on the road. You know what I mean? And as long as I aimed it in a consistent manner and I happened to be in the right lane as in the right most lane, um, I could essentially determine the delay from making the command to Alexa and then the launch of the flare because there is some delay with this thing mostly because of the servo motor so um and then it, the the way that this flare ignites is through a pull string igniter which i install in the cap of the flare and then i secure this igniter i'm going to drill a hole here and then put a um, clamp on it. What is it called? A crimp ring as a stopper. So when it's propelled out of this barrel, like right here, it the pull string, you know, obviously remains in place, but that creates a friction needed to ignite the ignition cup inside of the pull string igniter, which will ignite the ignition button. Button is just a little hard blob of you know, the, the, the igniter on a flare. Um, that'll ignite the igniter, and then the flare will initiate, it, uh, will activate or whatever. And it's very instantaneous. There's no delay, really, between when this is pulled and when the flare composition ignites, you know, before it's flaring or whatever. And the cap seems to be negligible on these cheapo road flares. On the marine signaling flares, they are definitely not negligible. They, when they're when they burn, they drip like crazy. They drip melted plastic down, and then that makes strings that blow onto your legs and stuff. So that was a fail. These are not. Um, plus, they're going to be landing on the ground. So I'm going to show you how this works. What I did is I set this up. Oh, I did not make a routine yet. All right. So I set this up to the uh, smart home app, which is like the app that, you know, those cheap Alexa plugs come with. Um, I'm gonna show you how to make this routine on Alexa. Okay, so here's the routine in the Alexa app. It's basically simplified conditional programming, like if this, then that. So when I say blank drop flare, blank will say received, that's to acknowledge the, the, the receipt of the command. And then she'll turn the switch to the power off position, which in our case is actually the pull the pin position. Wait five seconds and then say, flare has been dropped, have a nice day. And that's it, it's very simple. But Alexa allows you to make a microprocessor. Thanks for saying okay. I love you. <clears throat> a microprocessor for whatever you're system you're using. Okay. Know that I'll be here for you. As always, your trusty AI. Okay, Alexa, stop. Thank you. Alexa, will you be my girlfriend? Stop being a pervert and continue with your test. Okay. Alexa, drop flare. I'm done. Ah, woo wee. That's perfect. <laughs>